In this video, we'll be discussing how global warming is causing extreme weather events across the world. We'll be talking about the difference between weather and climate. We'll also give some simple explanations of three major concepts of climate science, that is Arctic amplification, jet streaming and polar vortex. Towards the end of the video, we'll be doing a very simple experiment to understand the concept of polar vortex. Hello and welcome back to Sciencey Soup. We are your science buddies. I'm Arohi. And I'm Ankit. In our last video, Ankit asked a couple of questions. Let's have a look at them. If global warming is really happening, then why we are getting extremely cold winters nowadays? Why should I bother? Because winters are really very harsh in the region where I live and I would be very happy if I get some warm weather during winters. Yes, actually those were not just my question. Many of us have same queries in our mind including some of the great leaders of the world. There is this common misconception that global warming cannot be true just because it's getting colder and colder year after year at some places across the world. And this has made global warming a topic of political controversy. Yeah, that's true. But there are scientific evidences that prove global warming to be true. In our previous video, we discussed some of these evidences and we also talked about greenhouse gases and their effects. Yes, and in case you missed it, you can check the link given below in the description to know more about greenhouse gases and their effects. In this video, I am going to answer Ankit's questions. I will try to keep the explanation as simple as possible because if science is not your cup of tea, here comes your bowl of sciencey soup. Before going into your questions, it's very important that we understand the difference between weather and climate. What? Weather and climate? Are not both the same? No, there's a vast difference between weather and climate. Weather refers to short-term conditions of the atmosphere over a small geographical area which include wind direction and speed, snowfall, rain, daily temperature, sunshine, visibility, cloudiness and much more. Whereas climate is a long-term average of these daily weather conditions recorded over a period of 30 years in a large geographical area. Hmm, that's interesting. So, when we talk about climate change, that means we are talking about the time span of at least 30 years. Yes, that's correct. Okay, if you see the trend, snow is increasing every year in many parts of the world during winters. And we every year hear that this year snow has broken all the previous records. And if this trend continues for like 30 years, that will disappear from global warming. Yes, you are right that snow is increasing year after year in some parts of the world. But again, the snow that you are talking about is an indication of the local winter weather and does not represent the global climate. Over the past 50 years, we have seen a rapid change in the weather patterns across the globe. On one hand, we have had several events of deadly heat waves and severe droughts. On the other hand, we have had extremely cold spells and devastating floods. We have witnessed frequent storms stronger than ever before. During 2017, six major hurricanes battered the Atlantic region. Hurricane Harvey brought 27 trillion gallons of rain over four days in eastern Texas. Last winters, North America witnessed record-breaking low temperatures and several snowstorms. During December of 2017, the Arctic faced an unprecedented warm spell and was even warmer than much of Europe. Most strikingly, in January 2018, there were reports of snowfall in the high-altitude region of the Sahara Desert in Algeria. Summers of 2018 brought intense heat waves not just in tropical Asia but also all across Europe and several European countries battled with wildfires and droughts. These are some extreme weather episodes that we are encountering as a result of global warming. While one may easily link hotter summers to global warming, it is quite interesting how global warming is causing extreme winters. To know how this is happening, we need to understand two concepts. First is Arctic amplification and the second is jet streaming. Arctic amplification, also known as polar amplification, refers to the faster warming of the Arctic. 
studies suggest that the temperatures in the Arctic are rising at a rate twice much faster than the rest of the world. This is because of the enhanced greenhouse gas effect which we discussed in our last video. The unusual warming of the Arctic is causing the sea ice to melt at an unusually fast rate. Thinner ice sheets absorb more solar radiations, as a result of which there are more water vapors in the atmosphere. As water vapor is a greenhouse gas, it traps more and more heat. Thus the fast melting of the sea ice is being further accelerated by a feedback loop. Now if we consider the extreme weather episodes that are occurring every now and then, especially in the northern hemisphere, arctic amplification is to be blamed because arctic amplification is adversely affecting the patterns of the jet stream that directly influence weather patterns. Jet streams are narrow bands of fast moving air currents that are about 8 to 15 kilometers above sea level. They move at a speed of approximately 300 km per hour or even more. Depending on their latitudinal location, jet streams can be either polar or subtropical. Jet streams are formed along the boundaries between hot and cold air masses. They move in a long wavy circulation pattern. They arise when the temperature differences between the air masses lead to pressure differences. They majorly move from west to east direction and sometimes move from north to south depending on the season. During winters, when the temperature difference between the cold arctic air and the hot tropical air is the greatest, the wavy pattern becomes more pronounced and strong. The pattern of these waves directly influence the weather patterns. One of the factors that makes Polar jet streams vary is polar vortex. Polar vortex? Yeah. Okay, what is polar vortex then? Uh, to understand what polar vortex is, let's do a very simple experiment. Oh wow, experiment. Yes. For this experiment, we need a glass of water at room temperature, a glass of lukewarm water, an empty glass jar with a lid, some ice cubes, some paper strips and a lighter. First of all, Pour some lukewarm water into the glass jar and put some ice cubes on the inside of the lid of the jar. Next, light up a paper strip. Now put the lighted up paper strip in between the jar and the lid like so. As soon as the flame goes out, you'll notice that the fumes will start swirling around in circular pattern in the jar. Now repeat the same experiment but this time with normal temperature water on the lid instead of ice. Pour the remaining water into the jar. Repeat the process of lighting up the paper strip and putting it between the jar and the lid. This time you'll notice that when the flame goes out all the fumes sink down instead of circulating in the jar. Let's try and understand what happened here. In the first setup where we had put ice on the lid and lukewarm water in the jar, there was a high temperature difference created. This temperature difference created a pressure difference that forced the fumes to move in a circular motion. In the second setup, the lid and the jar both contained normal temperature water and hence there was no or minimal temperature difference between the two. This forced the fumes to sink to one direction as guided by gravity. The lid of the jar and the inside of the jar in these two setups can be compared to the poles and the lower latitudes and the fumes to the polar vortex. When during winters, the temperature difference between the poles and the lower latitudes is high, there is a mass of fast circulating winds about 50 km above the earth's surface over the poles. We call these winds the polar vortex. When strong, the polar vortex moves at a high speed of about 250 km an hour. 
A strong polar vortex remains contained in the polar region and also remains in harmony with the polar jet streams. However, when the temperature difference between the poles and the mid latitudes is not so high, the polar vortex weakens and sinks towards the lower latitudes and brings along cooler arctic air currents to the lower latitudes. This further weakens the jet streams and weakened jet streams bring extreme weather events in the affected region. With the increasing global temperature, weakened polar vortices are becoming much more common, making winters more and more extreme in some parts of the world. All right, now I understand how the local weather conditions are being affected by global climate conditions. That's great. But I am aware that 70% of our Earth's surface is covered by water. And I guess this large amount of water must be having some role in maintaining the temperature of our planet Earth. Is that true? Yes, oceans do play a very important role in maintaining the temperature of the Earth. To know this and the effect of global warming on the oceans, please watch our next video in which we'll also be talking about the simple steps that we could take to fight global warming. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it with your family and friends. And subscribe to our channel Sciencey Soup. Because science really matters. If science is not your cup of tea, here comes your bowl of Sciencey Soup. Bye for now and take care. And be curious. <laughs>